Please put your hands together for the principal of deep forgiveness, Mr. Daryl Green. How y'all doing? I can't hear you. How y'all doing? Hey, listen. I don't know what y'all came to get today, but I came to give y'all some love. Can I give y'all some love? Can I give you some L? O V E. That's what I came to give today. Listen, I'm so, I'm so incredibly excited. I'm humbled, I'm nervous. So if I take a pause, y'all ride with me. Can you ride with me? Yeah. I gotta thank my man, Cody. And everybody's probably got a Cody story. I met Cody in Vegas, Caesar's Palace, one o'clock in the morning, he was smoking a cigar. No, I'm sorry. I told you I was nervous. Jordan. He said they both ball hit it. And me too. And I was dragging this huge bag behind me with these shirts in it. And Jordan, he said he had been there and he hadn't spoke to anybody all night except for him and the folks that was with him. And we said hello to each other. And that's when our journey began. And I was about to sell him a t-shirt, a Deep Forgiveness t-shirt, and I was digging in a bag. He gave me a $100 bill and I couldn't find a shirt size. And I went to give the $100 back, he says, <laughs> he said, don't worry about it. Just send them to me when you get home. I'm sure you'll do the right thing. I went to give him the $100 back. I was like, look. <laughs> he said, just keep it. When I got back to the room, I Googled him. <laughs> when I got home, I said to my wife, hey, how you doing? She said, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? And I went to get the shirts, and I went right to the, mail, the, mail, the post office. And I overnighted him. And then he brought me to Houston to meet Cody at a Prompton. In Houston, and Cody, and I met the rest of the folks on the team. And Cody on stage just kind of blew my mind because he stood up and he said, Daryl. I'm like, Who's he talking to? He said, Daryl, can, um, can you stand up in 60 seconds and tell folks what you do? And I took a breath and I said, OK. And I began to tell folks what I did. And as a result of that, I got invited here. So isn't God good? Before I do anything else, I just want to give God all the glory and the honor that he deserves. Because how did I get here? I'm just, man, I'm just humbled. I told the folks last night, where's the folks last night? I told the folks last night, I said, look, I'm a big black guy. And they were like, yeah, we know. <laughs> and I said, I've been born by the river. That mean I cry. And I ain't ashamed about it. Just like I'm not ashamed just to lift up God's holy name. I'm just not ashamed. I'm going to be bold about it. So I want to just tell you about my story, oh, wait. there you go. My story of healing, reconciliation, and forgiveness. And this time is running fast, so I'm gonna move because I got a lot of stuff to say. 
I was a junior in college. I was majoring in criminal justice. I was sitting in class, and a young lady came to class and said, you need to get all your books, all your stuff, and you need to come to the dean of students' office. Whenever you get invited to the dean of students' office, it's really not a good, going to be a good look, right? So I get there, and the dean of office said, I mean, the dean of students says to me, your younger brother was stabbed, and they don't know if he's going to make it or not. You might want to call home. He didn't hug me. He didn't console me. He didn't do any of those things. There's my younger brother. He went bowling, 6'5", 255. He won the shot putting distance his junior year. He went bowling every single Friday. Mama's boy, daddy's boy. A young man went behind a counter, took his shoe. An altercation broke out. Manager threw the other kid out. As my brother went back to bowl, that kid went home, that 14-year-old kid went home to arm himself. And as he did that, my brother went to leave. And as he did, he stabbed my brother as he exited. So I came home from North Carolina. My major was criminal justice. I was going to work for the FBI. I came home from North Carolina to kill him. I came home with a 9 millimeter German to, to kill him because I wanted his family to feel the same pain, the same hurt, the same everything that I felt. Hurt people hurt people, and I'm going to tell you I was hurt. I was hurt for a very long time. And probably I will submit to you under the sound of my voice, the folks that are listening to me, some of you right now are hurting right now. Some of you are stuck. Some, we got brothers and sisters not speaking to each other, husbands and wives, fathers and sons, mothers and daughters. If you heard Ellen's story the other day, she said, hey, I would not have done that. I wouldn't have gotten that unless I sent that card. So I went to court to kill him, but God is so in club, he awesome that that didn't happen. I was angry for a long time and I asked God to take the anger off of me and give me something else. I wasn't far enough in my spiritual journey to pray for like supplication, right? So I just said, God, just take this anger off of me because I didn't, I didn't run from trouble, I ran to it. And if you and I went in a mailbox together, we went in a, in, in a room together, my deal is that I was coming out, you weren't. Whatever I had to do to you, I was going to do that to get out. My older brother was killed as well in a car accident. I am the only male child left. And I say child because I'm always going to be a child in my parents' eyes. My older brother was in a car accident. He was thrown from the vehicle. My father went back to the scene 16 and a half hours later and found him eight feet in the brush. His juggler vein had been cut. I'm the only male child left, so my life has got to mean something. I would speak all across the country, and I would tell the story. And in the back of my mind, I always wanted to say, now the next voice you hear is a young man who actually took my brother's life. You got to be careful what you pray for, ladies and gentlemen, because God just may give it to you. So we got a letter in the mail that this guy he was sentenced to life in prison. In Maryland, life means your natural life. That means you're not getting out. But he's put in for a modification of his sentence. We went to court. We testified on his behalf for his release. We testified, i.e., we forgave him. The judge suspended life all but 30 years. I asked the judge, can I shake, him? Can I shake his hand? You know the bailiffs? <laughs> you know the... the the sheriff that's in the court, I said, you think I can shake his hand? It was like, oh, no. <laughs> Don't you watch true TV? <laughs> they throwing benches and all kinds of stuff. I said, sir, you must not have heard me speak for the last 45 minutes. I said, that's why I'm not going to ask you. I'm going to ask the judge. And the judge said, if neither man opposes. And I went beyond those little swinging doors. And he had a three-piece suit on, not like the one I had on yesterday. But he has shackles here, Cody. Shackles around his waist and shackles around his ankles. That's what I call a three-piece suit. And when I went to shake his hand, he shook my hand like this. And I knew that the hand that he used to shake my hand with was the one that he used to kill my brother. 
But I needed that for me. I needed that for me to be able to heal. You see, I forgave him, but forgiveness was not about him. It wasn't about anybody else. It was about me. And I'm telling you right now, if forgive, it freed me. I'm telling you right now, if you hold on to something, let it go. If I can forgive the kid who killed my brother, surely you can forgive your neighbor who parked halfway in your driveway. Or your sister who forgot your, your birthday. Or may have re-gifted something to you. <laughs> Do you want to be better? I can't hear you. Do you want to be better? Yes. Do you want to change the world? Yes. It's going to start with us. That's why I love sending out cards because what y'all doing, and what I'm doing, because we all won. We all part of the same family. We getting it in. We changing the world. I'm going to tell you. The first send out card I got was from Jordan. And when I got it, he had a picture of me with my deep forgiveness shirt on. He said, you're great. You're going to do great things. I got it. I start running through the house. I said, baby, baby, look, this guy believes in me. And it was at a moment, and I called Jordan, he pro and Jordan still has the phone message that I left for him on his pocket, in his pocket right now. I was so blown away because I was in a moment of, yo, folks don't want to talk about healing. Folks don't want to, they hurt. And in some folks, you comfortable in your hurt. Some of you have been wilding around on your own, that old filth, for so long that now that stink starts to smell good to you. Stop drinking the poison and expecting somebody else to die. Don't wait because it might be too late, y'all. Don't wait. You're going to go to pick the phone up and that person that you want to say something to has already gone home to glory. And watch this. You got to live with that the rest of your life because you didn't make amends. And I'm saying to you, listen, I'm not saying if you forgive them that you let them, letting them off the hook. You're not. Because the guy who killed my brother, guess what? He got to live with that the rest of his life. Every day that he wakes up, he got to know that he took somebody else's life. My question to you, are you dying inside of unforgiveness? Are you sitting right here in front of us, sending out cards? Are you dying inside of unforgiveness for something that you just have not let go I was at dinner last night. What's that word, that uh, song, Frozen? Let it go, let it go. <laughs> Just let it go. I probably watched that show a thousand times. I've got two daughters. Aren't you tired of carrying that baggage around? Watch. I took a long plane flight to get here. And in order to get on that plane, you can only take on one personal item and one piece of luggage. I would submit to you that a good number of you, when it's time to get on the plane, you can't get on it because you're carrying around too much baggage. When you leave this conference, listen, if you don't know no better, guess what? You can't do no better. But now you know better, you got to do better. Failure is not an option. Failure is not an option. I was talking to a gentleman over here, he was a pastor for 25 years. 
He said he was holding on something for seven years. He said, it really just tipped me over. And it was tough coming back from that. Listen, you can forgive just because you can. You can forgive just because you can. And watch this. Sometimes it doesn't get easier, y'all. You just get stronger. You just get stronger. I left my job. I stepped out on faith in God's favor. And what do we do all our lives? We climb the ladder. Like you guys right now are climbing the ladder because you want to be an eagle. You want to sit in one of these seats. You climb the ladder, which is supposed to be the pinnacle of success. My fraternity brothers thought I lost my mind because I said, I'm leaving. What are you going to do? Your daughter's about to be a freshman in college. How are you going to pay for it? I said, it's all going to work out. I had a meeting with my wife, the commander in chief. <laughs> Christy, I love you, baby. And her two little generals. <laughs> my 19-year-old Rebecca and my 11-year-old who's a critical thinker. And the 19-year-old says, my wife says, go ahead, baby, as long as you keep the mortgage paid and the gas and electric gone. Go forth. I said, okay. The 19-year-old was like, well, how is this going to affect my standard of living? <laughs> and then the 11-year-old says, Daddy, I believe in you. Go ahead. Elements of heal healing. It gonna, it's going to take some time, you guys. Take baby steps. Make a plan. Sometimes we want to have those difficult but courageous conversations. Stop dwelling and retelling. Tell, dwelling and retelling the whole, girl, don't you? He did. Oh, oh yeah, he. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> don't you get tired of your girlfriends who tell you the same story every single day, all day, every day, every time you see them. They just drain your energy. I'm like, child, please. Boy, bye. Seek, seek grace. This is the young man who took my brother's life. After I shook his hand in court, I shook his hand and I said to him, he was crying and I was crying. And I said to him, God has just given you a second chance. God has just given you a second chance. And I said to him that you've been known for taking life. Now let's you and I go save some lives together. I'm running out of time. Somebody stop this thing from ticking. I keep looking at it. <laughs> Woo! I said, you've been known for taking life, so God has just given you a second chance, known for taking life. Yes, you and I go save some lives together. Three weeks later, he was on the steps of my work. And now we work together, you guys. We work together helping folks to, to move folks from being in bondage to being free. As I said, forgiveness is not about the other person. It's really about you. Stop drinking the poison and expect somebody else to die. That's Nelson Mandela's words. How powerful was it that last Friday was Good Friday and God said, forgive them, Father. I mean, Jesus said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Every Friday, y'all, is, is Forgiveness Fridays. And I get to speak to y'all on this Friday. Woo!
That was this graduation we were at. I'm 30 seconds. Cody, tell him, stop this. <laughs> this is my youngest, youngest member of the Deep Forgiveness family. Oh, y'all know that guy. Watch this, Cody. Bam. McCabe Avenue! Hey, that's when Cody became a rapper. That's when Cody learned how to rap. That's when he got a street game. Now give him some love, give him some love. This is my man, Jordan. I'm wrapping up. This was the very first card I sent out. This lady is Angela Bassett. This is the very first card I sent out with Jordan's help. He was like, look, this is what you got to tell her. <laughs> and because the message, the police department and the African-American community, there's such a huge lack of trust. I try to work with them to understand that, look, See, they don't know when they stop me that I'm a husband, I'm a father, I have two master's degrees, I love my children, I'm somebody's son, all those things. They just see me, a big black guy. And so what I try to do is to help us to bridge that gap of L-O-V-E. Here's my girl right here, Rebecca Randall. This is from Houston. I'm going to pop through real quick. I'm going to pop through real quick. I'm going to pop through real quick. This is a March for Life right here, Washington, D.C. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Yeah, that's right.